In part three here of the Movie Studio demo, I'd like to take a look at the rippling function. Uh, what rippling does uh, is if you have a bunch of clips and you uh, want to move clips, if the rippling is not on, for example, um, and I move a clip, what it does is it just grabs one clip and allows me to move it, but it doesn't do anything with the other clips that are on both sides of it. Let's say, for example, I wanted to delete this clip. If I delete it normally, it would just create a gap in here. I'm going to undo that. So with rippling turned on, which you can either do by clicking on the icon up here, which says Auto Ripple, or what I prefer to do is press the Control L key. That'll turn rippling on. Now if we look at that clip and delete it, it'll actually ripple or have a ripple effect on all the other ones where it will shift all those other clips into the blank space that I created by deleting that one. Um, on the rippling, there are a number of different options. Uh, typically, I just select the affected track. Um, what that means is it'll just, if I delete something on a track, it only affects things on that track. But other times, I may have other tracks where I have titles or um, other videos laying on top of this video track, etc. Or it may make sense for me to choose to ripple all tracks, markers, and regions. So that way things will stay in sync if I have a title, for example, over a certain section. Um, so that's the rippling effect. Another thing that you may like to use is something that's called group and ungroup. Um, so what that will allow you to do is whenever you add a clip uh, to the timeline here, the video and audio are grouped together. That means they're basically, if you try to move it, they both move all at the same time because they're grouped. Um, or if you delete, if you try to delete something, it's going to delete both the audio and video track. Um, what you can do though is you can actually ungroup something. So to do that, you can highlight the clip that you want to ungroup, and then you can right click on it and then select uh, group and then remove from. Now what that does is it removes this grouping from the video and the audio clip. So what, is, what does that mean? Let me just turn off the rippling here for a second. Um, now that these are ungrouped, I can actually move the audio clip independent of the video clip itself. So if I want to get rid of it all together, or if I want to um, move it to another section, that allows me to do that by ungrouping it. Um, what I'm also able to do, if I have ungrouped something, or if I want to group multiple things together, is I can highlight uh, the items that I want to group together and then I can go back into grouping and then do a create new group or, or shortcut key G. Um, that'll allow me to group things back together. And For some cases you may actually want to group multiple clips together so that whenever you move them um, they all are considered one thing. Alright, so that's a little bit about grouping and ungrouping. Uh, next I'd like to talk a little bit about the, uh, the playback rate. Um, so in some cases, you might want to play back at normal speed uh, in your video. Um, in other cases, like what I've got set up here, is I took kind of a long video with the intention to speed back the playback. Um, so it will basically create a time lapse of that video. So to do that, there's a couple different ways. So I can highlight the video that I want to do. I can press down and hold my control key. And then if I move my cursor to the far right of the clip, you'll see a little square with a squiggly, squiggly line under it. A squiggly line basically means that I'm going to change the speed or playback speed. So if I move it all the way to the left as far as it goes, what I've effectively done is created the same clip with a playback rate four times faster than normal. Um, so let's take a quick look at that. You can't see a lot of change, but the clouds are moving within the preview window here. Um, you can also right click on a clip and then select properties and then you will see the playback rate. So you can see it's set to 4. You can actually set the playback rate below 1 and that will actually create a slow motion effect. You can see which clips have a faster or slower playback rate because they'll have this squiggly line here within there. Um, Alright, so the next thing I'd like to do is show you event cropping or panning or zooming. So within a clip, 
uh, take this one for example, I'll click on this little, it'll just look like a square, and when you hold your mouse over it'll say event pan and crop. Now at the very beginning of my clip, instead of showing this wide scene, I actually just want to focus on these boats that are down in this bay. So to do that I'll grab the upper left or right corner and make that box, the viewable box, a little bit smaller. And you can see over here in the preview screen actually what's going to show up in my video. So this box here, it's still 16 by 9, is what you'll actually see. Um, down here, what I've done, and since I hadn't moved the scrubber, this is how the video itself will start out. So if I wanted to then later have it go to full screen, what I can do is move the scrubber over, let's say 10 seconds in. I can create another event by double clicking on this position line and then I can change it back so that the box goes all the way back out to the corners. Now a simpler way to do that than dragging the corners is just select the preset up here of 16 by 9 and you can see the box now goes all the way back. So again the scrubber will show that whenever you do it you'll see that the box that's viewable will actually change and it'll show it uh, zooming out. So let's watch the preview screen. So that's how you can fade in or fade out. Um, there's a bunch more that you can do within that panning section or you can do a search for keyframing um, and look at that. There's a lot of uh, a lot of potential in that area and this just barely covers it.